In this tutorial, I'm going to cover how um, if you add a lot of detail in a model within Mudbox, but want to render it within 3D Max, how do you actually extract those maps to add that level of detail in Max without bringing the entire geometry in? So for example, let's say I'm in Mudbox now and I've, I've sculpted on my geometry. I'm in the Sculpt layer now and I'm using Sculpt Tools. And I've actually adjusted the form um, of this model within Mudbox and then let's say I actually use like a stencil and uh, let's kind of add some texture to this thing right, you can use any of these maps that you want to you want to use and you can sort of see how this might actually deform the geometry and I can turn this off when I'm done you can see I've actually added a lot of detail into this model into the actual mesh itself <coughs> and it's sometimes too many polygons to bring back into max so one thing you can do is use what's called a normal map export or extract that normal map and then apply that to the object within max and it will recreate the kind of effect of all this detail without importing all of the mesh geometry itself so to do that you can just right click and select the model go to UV UVs and maps, select extract texture maps and hit new operation. And you'll see there's actually quite a few texture maps you can extract individually. Uh, in this case we're going to use a normal map and when you get select that you'll get this kind of box that pops up. So the first thing you have to know is the target model and the source model. So right now I'm sculpting at the highest level which means I have the highest subdivision of this geometry. So that's going to be where I want to take my map from. The next thing you can do is select the target model. So what you can do is actually step back. I'll go ahead and close this. You can go to mesh and kind of step up or down. And this would be the model depending on what level. Like let's say we took level 3. Like we're okay with that amount of detail. We can actually um, export this model. So let's say file export selection. I'm going to call this level 3 just so we're clear uh, as an FBX file format and then when I extract that map, so if we go back to this uh, new operation select normal map, um, we want to select actually let's go back before we do, let's go back to our highest so let's go back, step up our level all the way to our highest which is level 5 and let's extract the, the map at that level so we'll say um, extract texture map, new operation, normal map and we want to take level 5 and we actually want to select it and we're going to target level 3 so you can just actually select these and go between them but this is going to be where we want to take the map from and this is going to be the map the model that we apply that map to so once you have that all set the next thing you want to select is compatibility down here we're using 3ds max you also want to increase the, rend the image size right because you want this to be a high resolution image otherwise you can't render it very big so you could choose you know this is maybe too high unless you're rendering a huge banner um, for this example just use this 4096 maybe you want to go with something like that though actually let's do that. let's do 8192 um, and then everything else is okay and um, you want to then choose a file name so we're going to choose this and we'll say level 3 normal you can call this whatever you want it to be you can change the um, image type I'll just go ahead and set the default right now and say save and then once everything is set you can say extract and this will process that map it might take a little bit of time okay so once your map has uh, extracted successfully you can go ahead and say OK and then go into uh, back to 3ds max and then import and you want to import that level 3 mesh that you created so we're going to go ahead and import that make sure it's set to autodesk media and entertainment say ok and it should bring in the geometry so this is the level 3 version of the mesh it comes automatically with its material uh, it's always good to get in the habit of adding a UV unwrap UVW map so the unwrap UVW map and then you can see the kind of texture coordinates on that surface the next thing we want to do is uh, kind of fix this material a little bit so we'll go ahead and open our material editor go down to the bottom double click on the default material and generally when I get a map from Mudbox and I'm using V-Ray to render I want to rebuild this material as a V-Ray material so what I'll do is uh, just kind of toggle up here 
double click on a V-Ray MTL material and I'll just plug in the diffuse to the diffuse and the reflection to the reflection and then I can just go ahead and delete that one. One thing I also like to do um, whenever I'm using maps I double click and I deselect real world map scale. I don't know why it's always um, default selected but it's just a good kind of habit that I get into. Um, okay so the next thing you want to do is apply that material to the object and it might turn out gray in which case you need to double click on the material and hit this little light bulb up here um, and that'll show it again. Next thing you want to do is double click on the material uh, kind of go down to the maps and since it has this reflection map built into it I want to decrease the reflection from a hundred to like ten percent so it's not totally reflective. Alright so now we're ready to bring in our normal map so the first thing we can do here is find normal map from V-Ray normal map from the maps menu here and what I like to do is actually run this through a standard normal map. So over here there's a normal bump and if you kind of take those two and drag the V-Ray normal into the normal slot then you can drag this thing into the bump slot of your material. And that's just kind of a good thing to get into. The reason I like to do that is that I have this option then to run an additional bump map into that. So what I've already done is taken this normal map into Photoshop and then desaturated it and increased using um, image saturation, I desaturated it, and then I increased the brightness contrast. So I'm going to run this other bump map through it, and it just kind of exaggerates it or accentuates it a little bit. So um, to plug that in, you just uh, select a, a bitmap here, and then find that bitmap, and then you can drag that bitmap into the additional bump. So I really like to have these two maps running through a normal bump. The other thing you could do is double click on this and you know, you'll know you see there's different methods. When you double click on the V-Ray normal you don't have those. Um, oh by the way we also have to so I haven't plugged in our normal map to that so I need to do that as well. So where it says normal map I want to select that double click on bitmap and then find that normal map. There it is. That's the one you just extracted from Mudbox and then say open. And it's a, a big file size so this might take a second there. So that gets plugged in, so I'm feeding that through the normal map and then into this normal bump. Um, if I double click on this, you'll see I have different methods. And you can just try these. Sometimes some work better than others. I'm going to go ahead and select local XYZ. That tends to work pretty well. Um, and then if I double click on my material, the other thing you can do is change this bitmap amount. So the default is 30%. If you want it to be a little more, a little less, you could go up to like 40, 50% or down to 20. I'll just leave it on the default for now. And then the last thing I like to do is add um, like a little bit of a, a turbo smooth, just one iteration, kind of smooth out um, everything there. So now when I render this thing, it's going to render with that um, texture map on there. And it's going to look, uh, even though the mesh doesn't have all that texture, it's going to look like it does. So it's going to look quite a bit better. So now you can see it's finished rendering. It actually includes all of that texture, which is not actually in the model. There's a little bit from level three, but all that details only in the normal map. So it's being produced on the object just at time of rendering. So it's a really nice way to get detail back into your 3DS Max model without actually having to bring the entire mesh in. You can see this is super reflective. So if I wanted to, I could go into my map. I could just delete this reflection map, or I could go over here double click here and then you know make that even less maybe like two percent or something but that's basically how you uh, use a normal map from Mudbox to 3ds Max